Well, good morning and welcome to Shepherd Drive. We're so glad that you've been able to join with us at this strange and difficult time for all of us uh, for what we're calling Virtual Church. Uh, as a church family here, our aim is to share the love of God and the Word of God and to introduce people to Jesus. As a church family, we're a mix of people from all different backgrounds and countries and situations, but we're united together by what we consider to be most important, and that is knowing Jesus personally and living for Him. And we really do mean what we say on our sign here, that everybody is welcome. So we hope that you'll join us not only today, but also in the future. So come on in. Well, good morning. It's great to have you with us, and we're so glad you've been able to join with us. We do hope and pray uh, that you're safe and that you're well. Uh, in this situation where so much of ordinary life seems to be on hold, as though someone has pressed the pause button, uh, perhaps like me, you feel as though you're caught in a kind of constant circle of groundhog days. Uh, that's why it's so good to be able to meet together like this uh, on a Sunday and carve time out uh, to hear the Word of God, to bring our prayers and our praises uh, to Him together. Uh, so it's really good to be able to meet together. And let me just underline uh, once more that if there's anything that we could do to help you as a church family, uh, whether that's by going to get a prescription or to do some shopping or whether you'd see it simply like someone uh, to talk to because you're isolated at this time, uh, we'd be very happy to help out in whatever way we can uh, to support you. Please get in contact with us uh, by giving us a telephone call or by sending us uh, a contact form via our website and we'll be in touch with you very, very soon. Uh, at the beginning of John chapter 14, uh, as Jesus approaches the time where he will sacrifice his life on a cross, he says these words to his disciples. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. Well, as we meet together this morning in a world that feels unstable, let's allow the words of Jesus there to stabilize us and let me encourage you to take some time out to read the beginning of John chapter 14, verses 1 to 6, to spend some time uh, reading those words of Jesus, meditating uh, on them, and to be reassured by the security that they promise to those who follow Jesus, both now and in eternity. Uh, there is no better place to be in life at this time or at any other time than trusting in Jesus and depending on Jesus for all that we need. And our prayer is that each one of us will come to do that in the days ahead. Uh, again, Debbie has very kindly chosen some very helpful uh, songs, picking up the, the themes and the message that we're considering this morning. So let me encourage you to tune into those and to listen and even to sing along uh, at home. Uh, I have a few notices. Uh, I'm going to share those with you now just to say uh, on Tuesday and Wednesday evenings we'll be holding our virtual uh, digging deeper groups once more. Uh, we're gradually getting our heads around the Zoom technology and getting better at using it, so please uh, join us. And if you haven't been a part of uh, one of those groups uh, to date, but you'd like to join one, do please contact us and we'll be very happy uh, to, to bring you into one of those digging deeper groups and include you uh, in those very valuable times. Uh, this morning we're starting our Easter series and one of our members, uh, John Skull, will be bringing God's Word to us in a, a few moments from Luke chapter 19. Uh, and then on Good Friday, uh, Peter will be speaking to us. We'll be uh, having another broadcast then and he will be uh, leading that time. And then on Easter Sunday, we'll have another virtual service uh, as we think through the hope of the resurrection, which speaks so very clearly uh, into the crisis and situation that we find ourselves in today. Uh, Sherry and Anna are very kindly pulling together children's resources, and by the time of this broadcast, uh, those should have been circulated and should be available to you. We hope those uh, will be helpful. And also for the older age group, uh, the JCB group uh, of young people, uh, worksheets have been produced, and again, those should be uh, circulated by email so they're available at the time you need them at the time of this broadcast. Uh, if you're not on our circulation list for any of those and you would like to be again, please let us know and we'll be very happy uh, to include you. So before I hand over to John, uh, let's come together now and let's pray. Let's pray together. Jesus taught us how to pray with these words. 
And wherever we are at present, let's pray these words out loud together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Father, in a world so full of uncertainty, we thank you that we can rely on the certainty of your character and of your word. In your word you tell us, I am the Lord and I do not change. And we thank you for that truth that in a world of shifting sands and shifting situations, we can know absolute security by knowing you through your Son and building our lives on the rock of your promises. Father, again, we pray for our nation at this time of crisis. We pray uh, for those in positions of power who make decisions and policies. Uh, Father, we pray for those uh, in the NHS and especially those on the front line of our incredible Uh, health service. We pray for their protection uh, and for their strength. Father, we pray for those uh, in our supermarkets and who work behind the scenes in our communities, uh, making food available and keeping the community uh, functioning. And we want to pray especially for those who mourn and grieve at this time, as the number of deaths uh, due to this virus continue to rise. And Father, we pray that the tide will turn against this enemy that we face and that very soon this virus will be contained and a reliable vaccine will be found and available. Father, we want to pray too for those who are particularly experiencing difficulty and hardship with those who are struggling with loneliness and those who live with anxiety. And especially, Father, we want to pray this morning for those who struggle with invisible illnesses, those who struggle with mental health problems, for whom this is such a very difficult time. And when the support they have perhaps relied upon has been temporarily withdrawn. Father, can we pray that you would draw them to yourself? We pray that you would please bring comfort into all these situations, that you'd bring help into their distress, that you would bring light into their darkness and that they would discover friendship with you and come to know the peace and security that that brings. Father, we also want to pray for John and Sean serving you in Japan at this time. We thank you for them. We pray you will bless them and help them at this time of instability. Uh, We want to remember those in the small church family there who are uh, working through uh, baptism and what it means and looking into church membership. We pray that in time we'll be able to Rejoice with John and Sean at the baptism of those who have put their faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and that they will join the church. And we pray that you would help the church family there at this time of change and disruption. And as uh, old workers, as it were, move away and new workers come to join the team there, uh, Father, we pray that you would ease that transition, that you would bind them all together uh, in love and that you would encourage them Uh, as they seek to reach out with the good news of the Lord Jesus Christ this Easter time. Uh, Father, now, as we come to begin to think through the message of Easter ourselves, would you please take hold of our hearts and our minds? Would you please speak into our lives and help us to see fresh things in your word or help us to see familiar things in your word in a fresh way and fix our eyes on Jesus? on the champion who initiates and perfects our faith. And we ask these things in and through his saving name. Amen. Well, I'm going to hand over to John now. Thank you, John. Good morning. This is John bringing you a message from the Holy Bible on this Sunday before Easter. Our Bible reading is Luke chapter 19, verses 28 to 44. This records what happened on the Sunday before the first Easter Sunday, which is often called Palm Sunday. So now we will read the Bible reading for today. 
Jesus has told a parable and now he is entering into Jerusalem. This is the Bible reading from Luke's Gospel. After telling this story, Jesus went on toward Jerusalem, walking ahead of his disciples. As he came to the towns of Bethphage and Bethany on the Mount of Olives, he sent two disciples ahead. Go into the village over there, he told them. As you enter it, you will see a young donkey tied there that no one has ever ridden. Untie it and bring it here. If anyone asks, why are you untying that colt? Just say, the Lord needs it. So they went and found the colt, just as Jesus had said. And sure enough, as they were untying it, the owners asked them, why are you untying the colt? And the disciples simply replied, the Lord needs it. So they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their garments over it for him to ride on. As he rode along, the crowd spread out their garments on the road ahead of him. When he reached the place where the road started down the Mount of Olives, all his followers began to shout and sing as they walked along, praising God for all the wonderful miracles they had seen. Blessings on the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in highest heaven. But some of the Pharisees among the crowd said, Teacher, rebuke your followers for saying things like that. He replied, If they kept quiet, the stones along the road would even burst into cheers. And so ends the reading for this morning. We could sum up these verses that we have just read as cheers, tears, and perhaps even sneers. But let's focus on Jesus. That is the important thing for us to do this morning, a focus upon Jesus. He is in control as the events of the day unfold, and it's always important for us to get Jesus in the rightful place uh, in our minds and also central in our hearts and lives. Here is this incident. In this incident, here we see uh, Jesus as the king. And there are three things for us to think about this morning. Uh, first of all, he plans the day, <clears throat> this special day. And secondly, he fulfills ancient scripture. And finally, we notice that Jesus is full of pain. So those are the three things that we are uh, considering this morning as we think of this Palm Sunday uh, story, this Palm Sunday incident in the life of Jesus and his disciples. <clears throat> First of all, then, he plans the day, or he has planned the day. Two of his followers are to unloose and take a donkey. And if the owner asks them, what are you doing unloosing my donkey? They are to use what was probably a password, <clears throat> which had Jesus had arranged, because I, as far as I can see, Jesus has arranged this day and planned it. <clears throat> and uh, so he presumably had been in contact uh, with the owner of this donkey. And so the f disciples of Jesus um, have to say, the Lord needs it. The Lord needs the donkey. <clears throat> Very interesting that Jesus needed and used a man's donkey. Um, <clears throat> If he, if he could use a donkey, then surely he can use people like you 
and people like me. He needed a donkey, and he used a, a donkey. Let us be like that donkey, if we are Christians. Let us be like that donkey and um, be willing to, to carry Jesus, uh, to carry Jesus to our neighbors, to carry Jesus, the message of Jesus, and all about Jesus to our neighbors and to um, <clears throat> the town, perhaps, when we get the opportunity w once again and we are free from the um, restrictions which we have upon us at the moment. And let us be like that donkey and be willing to uh, carry uh, Jesus to our friends and to our neighbors and uh, to our town because people do need a Jesus in their lives at this uh, time. <clears throat> so Jesus sits on the donkey and uh, his disciples uh, take off their cloaks, their robes, and um, first of all put, place it on the donkey for Jesus to sit on. <clears throat> and uh, then the crowd begins to increase. Uh, some people are accompanying Jesus down the Mount of Olives towards the city of Jerusalem and others have caught the excitement of the day and are coming out of the city and so one crowd meets another crowd and there is Jesus uh, in the midst riding on the donkey. <clears throat> uh, soon the crowd gathers and increases and it's a very happy day. Uh, it's a very joyful day. Uh, it's a day when, the, when they have their the crowds are, are, are around and um, enjoying the, the, the moment and being together. Sadly, we're, we can't have a crowd these days and we look forward to the time when our building, our church will be, building will once again be filled with a crowd of, of people. But on this particular occasion, the crowd had gathered round and was accompanying Jesus into the city. <clears throat> And the crowd is not only happy and uh, joyful and excited, uh, but also there is a feeling of great expectation uh, rising amongst the people. The crowds begin to chant, Hosanna, Hosanna. The word Hosanna means um, save. And soon the whole crowd is saying to Jesus, chanting, save, save now, save now. But Jesus has not come uh, to be an earthly ruler. Jesus had not come to be an earthly king, but uh, he has come to enter into the hearts and rule in the hearts and lives of men and women and boys and girls. I think it was Princess Diana, wasn't it, who um, made this statement that she, she said, I would like to be the queen of people's hearts. I would like to be the queen of people's hearts. A and uh, Jesus is not a, to be an earthly ruler, but he is to be the ruler, the savior, and the ruler of men and women's hearts and lives. So Jesus came not to be an earthly king, but to be the savior of sinners like you and me. And people all over the world and people of every age have bowed the knee before the Lord Jesus and had him in their hearts as savior and as king. <clears throat> so Jesus had planned this special occasion and it's all working out according to his plan and purpose. Secondly, he ful Jesus fulfills scripture. Some, of, some in the crowd would recall that ancient that the ancient prophet Zechariah had forecast that the special one 
would ride on a donkey. Uh, we get those um, words in Zechariah in the Old, part, Old Testament part of the Bible. Uh, let me read them to you. In Zechariah chapter 9 and verse 9, we find this ancient prophet Zechariah forecasting, Rejoice, O people of Zion! Shout in triumph, O people of Jerusalem! Look, your king is coming to you. He is righteous and victorious, yet he is humble, riding on a donkey riding on a donkey's colt. And some of the people who, and many of the people who were there with Jesus would um, know their Bibles, would know their Old Testament uh, by part of the Bible. And they would begin to link up uh, this coming of Jesus, on, riding of Jesus on the donkey uh, into the city of Jerusalem with the ancient a prophecy and would find that Jesus was fulfilling um, this ancient prophecy, this ancient message, uh, and all the symbolism was there as well. Some might even have uh, recalled an incident in the life of King David at an earlier time. King David was nearing the end of his earthly life and had taken to his bed. He was old and he was cold and he was probably ill and he was soon to die. When the queen came in to visit him on one occasion, uh, she said to David the king, one of your sons has proclaimed himself as king of Israel. David, King David, immediately is alert and snaps to attention and uh, issues these instructions to the queen. Um, whether he threw his feet uh, over the bed, side of the bed, I don't know, but he certainly sat up and he was very much alert. Um, Get me Zadok the priest, he said. Get me Nathan the prophet. Get me Benaiah. Benaniah, and uh, do it quickly. I want them here straight away. And when they arrive, these three important men, uh, he says to them, get my mule, my donkey, the one the king always rides upon. Everybody knows that, that only the king rides upon this animal. Get it quickly, he said, and when you get it, put Prince Solomon on the donkey and let him ride into the city on my animal, the, ana the animal on which only the king ever rides. And so they did this. And Solomon sat upon the king's donkey. And we are told, as they did this, all the people went up after him and the donkey, playing on pipes and rejoicing with great joy, so that the earth was split with the noise of their rejoicing. And now a very similar thing is happening. Here is Jesus on this animal. And clearly there is a great link between these Old Testament events and the fact that Jesus is now the king. The right, in the incident of King David, uh, the rival king was defeated. Now here is Jesus fulfilling this ancient prophecy and symbolism. And uh, we have to make Jesus our king. Make Jesus your king. He is the king. 
So make Jesus to be your king. Let him be the ruler in your life as the king in ancient days ruled and reigned, so let Jesus become your king. There is a rival king <clears throat> today. There is a, a ruler of the, pr the prince of this world who, seek, who has brought all the confusion and all the trouble uh, into the world. And so, we must not bow the knee, as many people do, to the rival king, but we must bow the knee to the true king, even our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. <clears throat> Finally, as the day draws to a close, this special Palm Sunday day, first Palm Sunday, as it were, as this day draws to a close, what do we see? What's this happening? Suddenly, Jesus is weeping tears in, of great pain and distress. What's the matter, Jesus? Why are you crying on such a, a happy day? What's gone wrong? Why are you in this state? Why are tears falling down your face? What's the matter, Jesus? The fact is that Jesus knows the future. He is not like you and me we try to look into the future and wonder what, it, what the future will hold. But Jesus can see the future. He is the special one. Uh, he can see what's going to happen in the coming years. And as Jesus enters into Jerusalem, he looks down upon the city of Jerusalem with its buildings and with its people. And as he does so, he realizes that these very people, some of them who are around him now, saying, save, save now, on, the, on, the, on this happy day, will be rejecting him and who will kill him and also, as he looks into the more distant future, he knows that within the space of about 40 years, the city itself will be completely destroyed, ransacked by the invading Roman army. And many people will suffer, and many people will die, and there will be an enormous amount of trouble and distress and pain. And Jesus actually says that, how I wish that you of all people would understand the way to peace. But now it is too late and peace is hidden from your eyes. Before long, your enemies will build ramparts against your walls and encircle you and close in on you from every side. They will crush you into the ground and your children with you. Your enemies will not leave a single stone in place because you did not recognize it when God visited you. These words of Jesus and the awareness of what would happen to the ancient city of Jerusalem and the people within it caused him deep distress 
and he weeps tears of sorrow and grief. As the coronavirus sweeps across our country, there are many tears, but there are also many tears in the eyes of God. There were tears in the eyes of Jesus. He felt deeply about what was happening and what would take place. The rejection of God's Son will bring inevitable loss to men and women who bow their knee to the rival king and who do not accept Jesus as Saviour and Lord. Let me read this verse 44 again to you. They will crush you into the ground and your children with you. Your enemies will not leave a single stone in place because you did not recognize it when God visited you. So what can we do? What should we do in the light of these words from Jesus and this warning from Jesus? Well, we have to accept the opportunity for salvation because that opportunity is there for people today. We have to ask God to give us tears, um, tears over our own sins and tears for other people who are in trouble and distress. We have to ask God to give us trust in Jesus, the Savior, and accept his rule as king. It's a package deal. We cannot have Jesus as Savior. We cannot have our sins forgiven and reject Jesus as king. We accept all that Jesus is when we become Christians. We accept Jesus as our, our Savior who can and will and does forgive our sins, but we also accept Jesus as our King, the one who rules our lives and who reigns in our lives. He is King forever over his spiritual kingdom. It's not a an earthly kingdom. Uh, Jesus is very different from all the other rulers and governors and um, people who, uh, who rule countries. He is uh, the ruler of a spiritual kingdom. He is the ruler in the hearts and lives of men and women who bow the knee before him. But also Jesus is full of deep feelings uh, towards us and towards people. So as we come to the Easter period once again and under these very strange and unusual circumstances, let us make sure that we focus our attention on Jesus. All the people on that first Palm Sunday were focusing their attention on Jesus. Let us focus our attention on Jesus. And what better way could we um, uh, spend our time than focusing upon Jesus and uh, reading his story and his words and the miracles which he performed by uh, reading the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. We shall all have plenty of time, it would seem, uh, over the Easter period during the next days and perhaps even weeks. Let us use it to focus our attention on Jesus and to bow the knee before this wonderful Savior. <clears throat> and so we come to the conclusion of our, our time together this morning, and I trust that you will be able to um, take on board some of those things which we have been considering together, and we will now have our final prayer and blessing. 
The Lord bless you and watch over you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look kindly on you and grant you peace and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.